And welcome into the Panther Pride Show here on TV 24. This is your weekly behind the scenes look at Walter Welburn High School football with the head coach of the Panthers, Coach Jeff Smith. I'm John Holder. Another successful Friday night for the Walter Welburn Panthers on the road for the second straight week and another victory, a big win on the road at Central Coosa. Absolutely. Uh, you know, we had a pretty good trip that we had to make down um, to Coosa and uh, we got down there and it poured down rain on us before the game started. And uh, the whole warm-ups, it was, you know, we, we had to battle the, the rain and everything else. But uh, our kids came out and had a good start and, you know, played really well. It's been mostly dry this football season. So this is the first Friday night we've had to deal with playing in the yeah. rain on a wet field. So uh, what special things from a coaching standpoint uh, do you do to, to prepare and kind of battle playing on a wet field? Well, we made up for it this week because it, it, it was plenty plenty of rain. Uh, you know, just trying to keep the balls that we're going to play in the game with dry. Uh, we, we took extra balls down there that we warmed up with uh, because of how they were just completely soaked after we got through warm-ups. Um, our game balls, we were able to keep them dry and keep some towels, you know, from getting them wet too and just try to keep everything under plastic as much as you can and try to make do. It's really difficult to play a rain game on the road. It's much easier when you when you have a, rain, a game like that and with all that rain when you're at home. You got you know your stuff that you can help try to get things dry with, but on the road it's real difficult. But we, we, we were able to overcome it and, and play well. Well, it was a wet Friday night, but it was a winning Friday night for Walter Welburn. We'll have all the first half highlights of the Panthers' big win over Central Vacusa coming up next as the Panther Prize Show continues here on TV24. Back on the Panther Pride Show here on TV 24, Walter Welburn on the road down in Hanover, Alabama and Coosa County taking on the Central Coosa Cougars, a big win 44 to nothing. Go Smith, uh, let's take a look here at the first half highlights. In the first half, there were a lot of highlights as again, your team got off to a very good start. Well, we did. Um, I mean, the thing that we was worried about is going on the road that far and then having those elements, how would we start? And we came out and had a very good start. KV on Wesley here is returning uh, the kickoff return here, and we got the kickoff return to about the 40. Uh, here, Calvin Spinks, we run a, a buck sweep play right here, and he this was the second play of the game here, and he took it to the house here, and uh, really had a good night right there. He rushed for almost 100 yards and was a racehorse winner, and that was a two-point play, and we're up 8-0 to zero to start the game off. Came out here defensively right here, and Jet made a, a did a good job right there and recovered a fumble for us. And um, you know, so, and here he's running a, a quarterback keep play right here and, and makes a good move right here and cuts back and the tackle he gets right here from behind right there was a, you know, was, um, was going ho, ho, glad that he was okay on that. Uh, here, uh, Contreras Hunt's making a good run right here, and um, again the offensive line you see right there, Dylan Gilbert coming through there, uh, leading the play in right there, and. Um, Calvin making a good run here. You see Dylan coming through here and a good block right there by Logan Brooks and Contreras Hunt scores and makes it 16 to zero. Here we're on defense here and, ha and having some good pressure right here. That's that right there's a junior Ryan Heisch that made a good tackle here. Uh, here we had some, we put some pressure on right here and quarterback had a good quarterback and he he out he outran our defensive end to the corner there and uh, Logan Brooks made a good tackle. Here we run a bootleg play here and, and Jet kept it and had, had a long run down here to start this drive off right here. It was tackled on about the 25 yard line. Again, very good block with the offensive line. Here again, and another. this was a zone read played right here that Contreras and, and Jet uh, worked on right there and did, did good again. And here again, here's Jet coming in here for a bootleg right here and, and able to get in the end zone right there and score. Uh, here, Logan Brooks gets in on the action here, and again, we had a nice hole right there that the offensive line created for us, and we're up 24 to zero. Uh, they, again, they had a mishandled snap. Again, it's, you got to realize how wet it is too right there in their defense right there. I mean, everything's gotten extremely wet. Right, I wish we could have saw what happened on this play here, but this was a quick pitch play here, and this was our, our hardest hit and our pancake block right here from Chase Carroll right there. The film, film didn't pick it up right there, but it was some kind of block. Uh, here we ran a belly play right here, and it, it was a nice hole here that you, you know our offensive line created. So it's 30 to nothing here to start this game off, and again they're having trouble with a snap. Again, it's very wet, and uh, here we're doing a good job gang tackling here. That was Bryce Hill coming over the top here. Here's a backup running back, Justin Berry, right here that plays wide receiver for us. And 
we've got playing tailback right now, and here's our, our second team fullback right here, Josh Rittenhouse, who's uh, him and Justin both have gotten a lot better. And Josh right here again on our trap play right here, drives it on in here and offensive line block well. And when we kick our extra point here, Logan Brooks and, um, and goes up here 38-0. They come out here and they ran a, a post wheel here and uh, Calvin makes a good interception and takes it back to the house. But we had a, we had some block in the back right there and uh, ended up having it called back right there. I hate that because it was a good run for him now. Kavion Wesley is our third tailback that comes in right here, and he, he runs it on in here behind our offensive line. Again, he's had some good blocking, and Logan comes up there and kicks the extra point, and it's 44-0 at halftime. 44 to nothing at the half. Mm -hmm. and Coach, I think it says a lot about your football team. You had a lot of kind of unique things. You're a non-region game, playing an unfamiliar That's opponent right. on an unfamiliar field. Your longest road trip of the year by Absolutely. far, and it's raining, and you go out, and the intensity and focus just really so good. Despite all of those challenges, uh, you come out and go at 44 to nothing at the half. Well, we had one mishandled ball was it was on a punt return. Uh, Calvin went up to catch the punt return, and, and when he went down for it right there. I thought the ball bounced off his knee, and uh, anyway, bounced forward and Jet got on it. That was the only mishandled um, um, ball we had in the first half with all that weather and everything. So that's what I was very proud of our kids. You know. We didn't turn the ball over. We didn't lay the ball on the ground. And it, it, it takes a lot of focus to do that, especially in that wet weather. You feel like, uh, obviously, improving from week to week. It's uh, You were a big favorite Absolutely. going in. You won the game. But coaches look for improvement more than anything. What was that improvement well, like Well, we're, we're getting better. You know, I mean, we, we've gotten better from, uh, you know, we've gotten better from the spring to now. And a lot of it's got to do with we're young. And it, it seems like every week we're getting older and we're getting better. And, you know, we, we've shown a lot of improvement from spring training to present day. And I'm, I've told the, the players this morning when we met, and we met this morning and watched a film from Friday night and started watching film on B.B. Comer. And I told them how proud I was of them because th they're getting better, our momentum's building, and you can just feel, feel, feel it in our community and feel it in our school. It's just, you know, there's a lot of excitement going on. Well, but up 44 to nothing at halftime over Central Coosa. The football team, not the only folks affected by the weather. The bands from both teams were affected by the weather, but the Welburn Highlander band was there in Hanover. They did perform at halftime, but a little bit different. Here they are performing from the stands down at Keith Bullard Stadium in Hanover. Back for second half highlights of Walter Welburn's 44 to nothing win over Central of Coosa this past Friday night down in Coosa County. Uh, Coach, second half, one of the things that you want to see at some point during the season is getting those young guys, getting a lot right. of playing time. You mentioned being young. You got some even younger guys in there to get a lot of significant playing time on the road in the rain as we look at second half highlights. I know we're going to see some of these younger guys for your football team. Well, we, we were able to to play everybody that we dressed out the last two weeks. And, and, and you know, that, that experience that you get on Friday night is invaluable. You know, we, you know, we play B team games on Monday night, but when you can get to go out there and play on Friday night, it just makes a big difference. Uh, they came out there, um, started, they got the ball to start the second half. Uh, you know, we, we went out there and they and, and kind of relaxed just a little bit and they got a first down on us right here when the ball was dropped. Um, Harley Kendall comes over, makes a good tackle right there. Uh, again, they're, they're having a hard time with the ball, and Contreras ends up making a good sack right here, the quarterback. And then uh, that's pretty much it for our starters right there. And then we start subbing out pretty much uh, after that. Uh, here they, we make a pretty good gang tackle right here. And I think this is the last play. That was the last play that anybody that started for us played. Now we, we got in here, KB on Wesley right here, and that's Casey Thompson, a senior, leading him as a guard here. And he's running hard. Uh, come back right here again, uh, KB on Wesley right here. He gets a good first down for us right there and gets it down 
uh, down in their territory. Um, here, this is an eighth grader, uh, Amarion Curry. That is Jamiron Curry that played for us last year's younger brother. He's just an eighth grader, and he had a good play on the trap here. And right here, Kavion here, he's he's uh, trying to get in the end zone, stepped out right here, and then we just went ahead and took a knee, and that, that actually ended the game. They shortened the quarters and ran the clock the second half right there, so. Uh, it didn't take long to play the second half. Coach, you mentioned shortening the quarters to just mm -hmm. six-minute quarters, playing with a running clock and so forth. That's something we don't see a whole lot in high no. school football. Talk, talk us through that. How, how does that come about? Well, I mean, the, 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 the other team, um, it was suggested by the officials and the other team wanted to do it right there, so we agreed to do it. Um, you know, I, I, I like it and I don't like it. One, I like it because I don't like seeing the score get up, you know, too far. Uh, I don't like it because we had a chance for some of our young guys to play and they didn't get as much time that, that I would like to see them get to play. But I do understand it because, you know, some of these scores where people are getting beat so bad right there, I just I think it's best to keep the sportsmanship part of it right there and not getting the score up so high. As we uh, go into talking about uh, kind of the rest of the season, we're at the midway point of the season. You got uh, the last non-region game there, and then you're going into region play pretty much the rest of the way. I know you want to talk about your fine staff of assistant coaches as I well. Tell, tell us about those guys. Well, I tell you what, they've worked extremely hard this year, and I'm very proud of them. You know, uh, Coach uh, Jordan Houston, uh, his, his father was actually uh, my offensive line coach at Jacksonville State, and, and he coaches for us, and he coaches offensive line. I think if any area that's showed the most improvement this year has been our offensive line, and uh, he, he just does an outstanding job for us. Coach uh, Alan Russell coaches our defensive line. He is, me and him have coached together now for 15 years, and he, here's the deal. Uh, the last nine years that he's, he's coached with me at Welburn, he's drove from Hoover to Welburn every single day to coach with wow. us. Yeah, so it's, he's got a lot of dedication and, you know, and is a fine, fine football coach. Uh, coach uh, Nick Burns is coaching our secondary and receivers this year, uh, done well for us. Uh, coach Allen Lane, he he is he's uh, he basically assists me in practice right there, but he's done a lot of our video in this year, and it's really helped us a lot as far as getting different parts of practice film so we can go back and show it to our players. And then I think one of the good things that I did this year is we was able to hire Judd, my oldest son, with us right there, and I fired the offensive coordinator, which was me, and made him the <laughs> offensive coordinator right there. And uh, he, he's done a great job with it. He's such a student of the game. Just been very proud of him and what he's been doing. Yeah, those assistant coaches are invaluable yes. and a hardworking group of guys. Speaking of hardworking guys, you got some more player awards this week. Tell us about Absolutely. those. Absolutely. We had some very good efforts. Our scrambler was Dalton Gilbert, and his twin brother, Dylan Gilbert, has been the scrambler a couple of weeks right there, and they're very competitive, and uh, they're known as the Twin Towers when they were little right there, and they've just really done well for us. Uh, race horse is Calvin Spinks. Like I said, he had almost 100 yards and a half. Pancake block was Chase Carroll. I hate we missed that on the film, but it was it, it was some kind of block. Headhunter was Christian Figueroa uh, this week. Christian Christian is a student of the game. And I tell you what, of all our players, Christian watches probably more film than anybody. Big Hog was Jet as far as the best defensive line linebacker performance. Twelfth man Logan Brooks was two for two on extra points right there on a very wet field. Uh, hardest hit was Chase Carroll with, with that that block we was talking about, and then the meanest Panther was Christian Figueroa. And right. there's your player of the week, so both offense and defense. Offensive player of the week was Dalton Gilbert. He had a, a good grade as far as the offensive line goes. And, and our defensive player of the week was Christian Figueroa, who had six tackles and, and had a couple of good uh, pass breakups uh, during the game right there. And they threw the ball quite often. So, I mean, he, he had a lot of action. So, again, both these guys right here with the offensive and defensive player of the week, and they, they did a tremendous job for us. And you mentioned sportsmanship. I want to mention also that last week, coming out of the Glencoe game, Welburn was selected by Fellowship of Christian Athletes and Grace Radio as a sportsmanship team of the week for this part of the state of Alabama. Uh, had a chance to come out and present that at the pep rally last week. Congratulations on the, the sportsmanship award. And we appreciate that too. That means a lot, you know. And 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 the thing that I'm proud of with that, we did it on the road. You know, it's it's always good to. I mean, it's, it's easier to do things at home than it is on the road, but we was able to get the Sportsmanship Award at Glencoe, uh, you know, playing playing there on their homecoming on top of that. So I, I, I really appreciate that a lot, and I, I really that says a lot about our, our coaches and, you know, and our players, the character they've been showing. 
We come back, we're going to look at the offensive and defensive players of the week. You'll meet them as the Panther Pride Show continues here on TV24. All right, we're back here on the uh, Panther Pride Show here on TV24. We've got our offensive and defensive players of the week. We've got Dalton Gilbert and also Christian Figueroa, offensive player of the week, defensive player of the week. Guys, uh, congratulations and welcome into the Panther Pride Show. All right, we're going to begin with Christian here because during the break there, uh, Coach Smith was telling me that probably of everybody on the football team, you're the one who logs the most hours watching film. Tell us about your, your film watching habits there. Well, before I go to sleep at night, I like to watch a little film, you know, and sometimes whenever I'm just bored or not doing anything, I like to get on the, my Huddle account and watch a little film. Uh, this, is, this, is my, this is my kind of guy right here. Loves watching football all the time. It's, do you have a specific thing that you do, or the things you're looking for? The, what's, what's, your, um, uh, what's your habit there as far as looking at film? What are you looking for? Tendencies, like who they like to pass it to and what routes they like to run and stuff like that. How many hours in a typical week during the season do you think you, you spend watching Huddle? I'm not sure. Probably a, lot, probably a, a good bit from what Coach Smith tells me over there. Uh, defensive Player of the Week, and uh, just talk about the game this week and playing in the, uh, in the rain down there. You haven't had that this year. What was it like playing in the mud and the rain? I know at yeah, first it's kind of you really don't like it. Once the game gets to going, most guys kind of really like playing in the rain. Is that true with you? Yes, sir. Well, it, it's kind of like – you kind of forget about it while you're playing, so you don't really care about what conditions you're in. Absolutely. All right, Dalton, let's talk about the, your, your twin, and your brother was here last week, the Twin Towers, they call them out there at Welburn. So uh, tell us just a little bit about going back to the weather we talked about there with Christian. I know the linemen really kind of like that. What's it like being down in the line and really being down in the mud and, and playing? It's it's an experience. I mean, it's you're with your, your buddies, and it's – we're the dirtiest people, you know, going one on one with somebody. I know Dylan hates it because he pulls, so he said it just tears <laughs> up dirt. It's, uh, it, uh, Coach was talking about getting your uniforms dirty and how long it takes to clean the uniforms and all that kind of stuff. But during the game, you're just not thinking about this. Probably the worst part of it, I guess, is probably when you get on the bus after the game and then you're riding about an hour and a half to come back. That's probably the worst part of it, I would guess. Yes, sir, it is. Tell us about the, the Twin Towers. Where, where, did, where, where did that nickname come from? Uh, uh, when I was in Little Leagues, uh, Coach Rami, uh, he, he, he didn't know our names. He, he didn't know <laughs> Dalton from Dylan, so he just called us Twin Towers. Twin and Towers. And we both look, or Gilbert. Just. As, as far as size go, you and your, uh, dimensions, height and weight, you're all exactly the same there? Is there some difference? Oh, yeah, like 10, 15 more pounds than him. But it's even, pretty much even. It's about even. Well, as we jump back into region play, uh, I know you guys are excited. You got feel like you've uh, built some momentum the last couple of weeks. A couple of big solid wins, big blowout wins. You got homecoming coming up this week. So, uh, tell us about uh, going into homecoming week. Well, everybody likes to win on homecoming, so that's what we're planning to do. And we're planning to up our game a little bit. They're a little bit faster than our last team, and um, they're just a little better. Dalton, I'll tell you, I know that coaches, every coach I know hates homecoming, but the players love it, you know, and so, but you have to keep your focus, and it's easy to lose focus because there's so much going on, not just the day of the game, but during the week itself, there's a lot going on on homecoming. How, how tough is it to maintain that balance of focusing on the game, but also enjoying homecoming? Like the whole community, you know, everybody just wants to grow and they're not focused on the game until Friday, and uh, we just have to stay focused and make sure we're in bed at a certain time instead of staying up all night. I got you. Our offensive and defensive players of the week, offensive player of the week, Dalton Gilbert, defensive player of the week, Christian Figueroa here on the Panther Pride Show. Back with more from Coach Jeff Smith when we roll on. We are back on the Panther Pride Show here on TV24. Talking Walter Welburn High School football head coach Jeff Smith back with us. You're back at home. That's a good thing. It's homecoming. You're back to region play. You've got a new region opponent coming in uh, that hasn't been in this region before. And the uh, BB Comer Tigers coming up from Sylacauga. So your thoughts about uh, this big game this week? Well, you know, we, we played BB Comer a few years in the past, just like we did Cusa Central. Um, they, we were in the region with them. 
Uh, so us playing playing them again and, and them coming up to Welburn right there, it's it really hadn't been that long, probably about four years since we played them. But, you know, uh, look, they're much improved from the start of the season to now they've improved a lot. They just had a big win over TCC, which is a, a rival game for them. And they're coming up there for us on homecoming week. And, you know, they're going to be a formidable opponent, that's for sure. All right. I was talking with the guys over there with Dalton and Christian about yeah. how coaches hate homecoming. Yes, we do. <laughs> so I, I haven't met one yet, and I'm assuming yes. I'm not going to meet one today that, that exactly likes homecoming. Right. No, you know, it's just, look, it's good for the community and it, it, and it's good for our school, but it, it is really tough, you know, to try to make sure that they stay focused on the, the business at hand. And that's what I told them. I said, look, homecoming for everybody else is a big fun time, but our fun time will be at the game. And then after the game right there, then we can enjoy homecoming. But before going into that right there, we've got to do our part to enjoy homecoming. That's to go out there and play well in this game and win it. It will be a huge region contest. Welburn's still alive, certainly for <laughs> playoff berths and all that. So homecoming and B.B. Comer coming to town. 7 o'clock to kick off on the hill at Walter Welburn Friday night. We'll have the highlights back here next week on the Panther Pride Show. For the head coach, Jeff Smith, I'm John Holder. We'll see you back here next week.